All right, when it comes to simplifying trig expressions, we have three pretty much really big ideas. Big idea one is to rewrite all functions using sine or cosine. All right, second big idea is, and you'll see this in my notes when I'm doing it, FFO, which means fraction face off, which means you have to simplify um, the fractions. There's a couple of different ways to do that. You can either find a common denominator. Sometimes you have to break the fraction apart. Sometimes you have to rationalize in the numerator. Sometimes you have to rationalize the denominator. All right, the next big idea that I have with this is um, factoring. Now, in factoring, we have a couple of different types. Um, it can either be the GCF that you have to take out, um, the difference of two squares, All right, so for the difference of two squares in my notes when I'm referring to what I've done, it's going to be D-O-S, D-O-T-S, or dots. Whenever you see that, that means the difference of two squares. Fraction face-off means that you have to manip manipulate the fractions in some way. All right, so let's go ahead and have a little bit more in, let's dive a little bit more into these. All right, so big idea one is write the trig functions as sine and cosine. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is just rewrite all of these pieces. Now, when you're looking at this, remember, this means this is the tangent of t times the sine of t. So I'm gonna replace the tangent of t which, with um, the fact that it's um, sine of t over the cosine of t. All right, and then keep that in parentheses. What we're left with now is I have the cosine of t plus sine of t times another sine of t. That's understood to be over one with this. Now, what I have here is now I have that this is the cosine of t plus the sine squared of t. And again, the sine is getting squared over the cosine of t. Now, and again, this, the sine squared of t is the same thing as the sine of t squared, where that exponent is on the outside. All right, so the last thing I want to do with this is I want to go ahead and also add in at this point, my fraction face off, I need to find a common denominator and add these two pieces together. Let me erase this one real quick. I just went ahead and gave us a, a little bit more room. So I'm going to do that by taking that cosine of t to find a common denominator. What I do is I multiply this times the cosine of t over the cosine of t. What that gives me here is again this is a cosine of t times a cosine of t so now i have the cosine squared of t plus the sine squared of t all of this is over the cosine of t now this is our first pythagorean identity always keep a look out for those pythagorean identities the cosine squared plus the sine squared is just equal to 1 over the cosine of t, which is equal to the secant of t. So that's how I reduced all of my original question, question 1, 
into one trig term. All right, again, we're going to use two things with this um, here. The first big idea I have is to change and write both of these in terms of um, my sine and cosine. Sorry about that. Um, I'll give myself a little bit more room here. When I go through and do that, what I'm left with is the cotangent is the same thing as saying that I have the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. And the tangent is the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. And again, this is my fraction face off. I need to do something with this. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this um, from a complex fraction into division of fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and keep change and flip. So that turns into uh, the first one stays the same. That's just the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. Change the division sign into a multiplication sign and then I flip that around and now that is the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. Cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And again, I can do this only because this argument on the inside is exactly the same. That's going to equal the cosine squared of theta over the sine squared of theta. Now this is down into my cotangent of squared of theta. So I've reduced that down to one trig term. All right, the last one like this we're going to look at is to go ahead and Again, change all of these into sine and cosine. Sine doesn't change anything. That is just the cosine of theta. Sine of theta stays the same, but I'm going to turn tangent into the sine of theta over the cosine of Theta. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. Um, this question is very similar to question one. So I have the cosine of theta plus now I have the sine squared of theta over the cosine of theta. And again, I want to go ahead and my fraction face off. This time I want to find a common denominator. I do that by multiplying this by cosine of theta over cosine of theta. When I do all of that, I have my cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta all over the cosine of theta, one over the cosine of theta, which is just the secant of it's very, very similar to the first one. All right, so I'm going to look at two important ideas with this. Um, by combining these fractions, I want to go ahead and find a common denominator here. Um, just with this, we want to find a common denominator that is closer to the Pythagorean identity. Now, do also know that as these get more complicated, instead of writing this first piece as sine of theta over cosine of theta, I could have written this as the tangent of theta. Um, so just know that going forward. So the idea here is I want to find a common denominator, but my common denominator I want to have here is I want my common denominator to be uh, cosine squared. Now, how do I know I can get that? is because what I want to do is I want to multiply this fraction by what's called the conjugate. So I multiply it by 1 minus the sine of theta over 1 minus the sine of theta. So that's a trick that you can go through and use um, multiplying by the conjugate. In this case, I'm rationalizing the denominator. I'm, I want to turn the denominator into one term, but if the, it was reversed, I could also rationalize the numerator. Now, 
On this side, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply that by the cosine of theta over the cosine of theta. When I do that, my numerator for the first fraction has the sine of theta times the cosine of theta all over my cosine squared of theta. Now, you must distribute the numerator here. So this is going to go ahead and become cosine of theta times 1 and then cosine of theta times minus the sine of theta. So this gives me the cosine of theta minus the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. The order in which you write these two is not important. It's similar to x times y or y times x. Now, in the denominator here, what I have in the denominator, this is that. This is the difference of two squares, which is great because what I have when I multiply that out, um, I get, and you can, if you FOIL this, remember, the idea about difference of two squares is that middle term cancels out. I'll go ahead and do that the first time. Um, after that, I won't go through and write it all out. So that's going to give me 1 minus the sine of theta for the first term. And then I take the sine of theta and multiply it times the two other pieces. So now I get positive the sine of theta minus the sine squared of theta. And again, that idea of the difference of two squares, dots, that middle term will always cancel out. All right, so now what do I have? I have the sine of theta times the cosine of theta all over cosine squared of theta plus cosine of theta minus cosine of theta times sine of theta. And this is all over 1 minus the sine squared of theta. All right, so always when you're doing this, Go ahead and be on the lookout for the Pythagorean identities. So in my notes, when you see these, you're going to see eyes. Always look for those Pythagorean identities. This particular uh, Pythagorean identity comes from the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So if I solve this, I know that the cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus the sine of theta, which is what I, what I wanted to have. All right, so now all of this gets replaced, and I have the sine of theta, cosine of theta. This is all over my common denominator now. I didn't write that up there that all gets replaced with the cosine squared. So now I can go ahead and write everything over my denominator, which is my cosine squared of theta. Um, when you're doing this, what you're really saying is now you're taking the entire numerator and putting it over that common denominator. So that all leaves me with plus cosine of theta minus cosine of theta, sine of theta. These two are exactly the same. Only one is positive and one is negative, so it completely uh, cancels out. And finally, what am I left out with? I'm left with the uh, cosine of theta over cosine squared of theta. Now, this is that one case. Remember what this means. This is the cosine of theta. Cosine squared means cosine of theta times cosine of theta. And this is the only way you can go through and cancel those out because it equals 1. I'm left with 1 over the cosine of theta or the secant of theta.